Hello everyone, my name is Sari and um, this is my YouTube channel with my knitting podcast videos. Um, in today's episode, I'm gonna be uh, sharing a product test that I've been uh, involved with and uh, talking about it. So this is just a little short episode about um, some knitting tools that I got to test from Hanna Lisa Hafekamp. Uh, you might know her best uh, from her Instagram. Uh, she has the HLH designs and she makes really nice project packs. And also she's the second half um, of the duo uh, starting the Making Stories uh, publication series. So Hanna Lisa, um, she makes these um, really ethical and sustainable project packs. Um, she makes them um, in Germany and now she has decided to um, expand her um, variety to knitting tools and uh, she wanted to have a couple of people um, product testing her uh, new tools and I got selected to be one of the testers. So I got um, this um, set of knitting tools for testing and they come in this little uh, pouch that fits really nicely in a project bag. Um, in this project bag, I can show you, um, it fits this and uh, there's also a sweater project and it's still not full. So it's a really handy sized uh, little pouch that they come in. And um, let me just show you quickly what you can expect from this episode. Um, there are a pair of scissors, a gauge ruler, a porcelain needle, and a set of dropped one. Where did it go? Oh no! Here. Uh, so, a set of um, these wooden stitch markers. So different shapes, different sizes. And I'm gonna show them to you uh, in action in this video and talking you through how I uh, like using them and, and uh, trying to give an honest opinion as Hannah Lisa hoped I would. So this is the kit I got from Hanna Lisa to try and this is a soft felted fabric with this uh, snap clip and inside you can find scissors uh, with a really sharp tip. These are um, I think these are surprisingly heavy. I really like them. And then there's a gauge ruler, wooden one. Uh, it has centimeters here on one side and then inches on the other side. Um, and there are needle size. Um, you can try which needle size you are using. So needle needle size measurements are in the middle. They are both in a millimeter and US sizes, which I think is really good. Um, then there's this porcelain needle. Um, I've already got a couple of questions from you guys about this and I'm going to show you how it works. I was uh, quite curious when I heard that there's going to be a porcelain needle. I was cu curious to see how it works and uh, if it really holds the, in use. So I'm going to show you how it works. And then it's snoring. Um, there's this uh, additional little pouch and there are wooden stitch markers. There are different three different sizes. So these are the largest size 
and then there's the medium medium size and then smaller ones and three different shapes so I'm gonna show you how they work too in this video um, let's start with um, the gauge ruler so I think it works really nicely when you are trying to measure gauge um, it is uh, very sturdy I think I like it uh, because it's so thick so it holds the fabric really nicely in place and the numbers are really clear so it's really easy to measure your gauge with it and I like I like how it has also the inches on the other side because on some um, especially on American patterns there might often be the case that there isn't any centimeters at all everything is marked in inches and Previously, I didn't have anything with inches on, so I had to always calculate how much it is in centimeters. So, also for row count, I think I like how this, like I said, it holds the piece really nicely together. So, this is a um, stockinette stitch sleeve for my client pullover, and it has the tendency to start rolling at this point before seaming. So the ruler holds everything nicely in place for me to get the accurate gauge measured. Um, I took some um, needles, different size needles, so I can show you how to measure the needle sizes. And usually on the needles there's a uh, text somewhere that states uh, the needle size, but I've noticed that I have some needles that don't have it, so this is really great. So it doesn't fit here, so and here neither. So here it goes really smoothly. This is already too big. So I knew already that these are 2.5 millimeters, but this just confirms it. Uh, let's try it with. A slightly bigger needle size. I know that this is a four millimeter it says on the needle, but let's start with um... No, actually I was wrong. This is 3.5 <laughs> So it's not four millimeter this 3.5 and it says here on the needle that it is 3.5 I can show you so that you actually believe me. I was wrong. So there you can see 3.5 Can you see it? Yeah there. So <laughs> this gauge ruler, like I said, uh, it measures the needle size accurately. Um, let's see, slightly bigger. This is the four millimeter I was talking about. So this is too small, still too small, and here it goes through it smoothly. This is already too big. So this is the four millimeter needle. And again, let's take one more, this big needle, and not five millimeter, not 5.5, and six millimeter it went through smoothly. So this was the gauge ruler. Um, the only thing that uh, I would like to add or change about this is that um, it could start the measurement could start here at the end the zero could be here and then the numbers could continue all the way through to the end because if you are trying to measure how long your piece is then even though at the moment the ruler is long enough to measure my sleeve but since the zero is over here, if I want to measure the the length of the sleeve, I have to start here and then the 10 centimeters is here and then I have to um, start again from zero so my measurement isn't that accurate. So if, if the measurement was from here, then I would just like flip the ruler to get a more accurate 
um, measurement. But that's the only um, thing that I would like to change about this ruler. Otherwise, I really, really, really like it. Um, the next thing. So the next thing I'm going to show you is this uh, little um, needle. And like I mentioned, it's uh, made of porcelain and I have tried to use it really roughly for these past few days and it's still uh, intact, it's still working really nicely. There's uh, no dents on it or or anything. Um, I had some of you questioning if it's really good to use because it's so big and let me show you. Here's my um, Voyager sweater. So I'm going to show you how how to darn or how it works when I darn in these ends. Have the uh, yarn through the needle. And let's start weaving it in. Here we go. So it works really, really well, I think. So I like how the needle is quite uh, wide and flat. So it kind of widens the stitch that I'm going through. And this becomes really, really neat edge. And at the same time, I can now show you the scissors. So they are really sharp and the tips are um, really, really sharp as well, tiny tips. So it's really easy to snip the yarn ends away. And I'll show you again over here. And let's go through the needle. And just start going through these stitches. So as you can see, it goes really nicely through the stitches. So no problem here. can see the end result is really neat and I'm just oops and I'll just snip away the yarn end and really nice neat result um, but this was knitted uh, with six millimeter needles and you might wonder how this works for um, something like socks or something that is knitted with smaller needles. So let me show you. So here we have a sock and sock scuff and I'm now going to show you how it looks when I weave in with this uh, small, um, small needle size or uh, small gauge. So I have the yarn through my needle and like before the needle goes really nicely through the stitches even though you wouldn't believe it when the stitch is so much smaller than the, the needle size. And like I said I like how it makes the stitch a bit wider. When I go through it, so when I um, even the fabric out, the yarn that I have been weaving in disappears. Beautifully. Let's do one more. Oh, 
and here you can see So even though it looks a bit big and bulky, it really does its job. However, um, this is only suitable for weaving in yarn ends and I don't think it really works for, for example, Kitchener stitch. It might work really nice for seaming, but I haven't had um, anything that uh, is supposed to be seamed at the moment so I will have to uh, come back with you on that when I try it out for seams. So now we have tried um, the scissors and the needle and the gauge ruler and like I mentioned I like them all. And the last thing we have are these uh, stitch markers, so I'm gonna show them to you in action. And like I mentioned, there are three sizes, so there are these uh, larger ones and then the middle size over here and then the small, small size. There's one more small, but I already have it in one of my projects, so there are these square ones and hexagons and then triangles and I'll show first on this um, this is my Voyager pullover so I'm gonna add some of these larger ones here I think these are yeah these are too small well these hexagon ones could work for these big needles but and also this one, but I'm gonna use the, the larger ones for this. So let's just start anything away. And I'll add the second one in a minute. Here we go. Let's add the second one here. And I'll just quickly, quickly work to the end of the round and turn around so I can start slipping these markers. So I have now worked my way uh, to the other side and then back again and the stitch markers I placed are here. So they are now uh, under my hand and sometimes I think uh, many stitch markers they feel really bulky under my hand and I feel really clumsy meeting with them but I can feel the stitch markers under my hand but they are not irritating me in any way so that's a good thing and here we go this is the first stitch marker coming up and let's see just slipped it and again, it doesn't irritate me here on the other side. Sometimes I feel, like I mentioned, that they are really clumsy and in my way, but these don't really feel that way. And it goes really well to slip them to the other side. So these are the largest ones and on a six millimeter needle. And even though they have um, sharp corners, they don't feel too sharp uh, in my hand. And um, I like them because they are made of wood. Um, I actually, I have a severe nickel, chrome and cobalt allergy. So even though I'm right now using metallic tips, I usually prefer using wooden needles because of my allergies. So I really like that these are made of wood. First of all, they are sustainable. And second of all, they are really easy on my hands. So, and they are really pretty. They look really pretty in Instagram pictures, I have noticed. So that's a bonus as well. I'll then try these um, medium sized and I'll try them on the Clive pullovers sleeve that I already showed you. 
So I have now added uh, two stitch markers here, one square and one hexagon square marker. And I'm working this on 4.5 millimeter needles. But I noticed that the triangular one is still too tight for 4.5 millimeter needles. So I have to try which needle size these work the best. But this, like I mentioned, this is too small for this needle size. The square ones and the hexagonal ones, they worked really nicely. But let's try, but let's try um, knitting with these medium sized stitch markers and 4.5 millimeter needles. And again, they don't feel bulky under my hand. So knitting goes really smoothly and they are not at all sharp, even though they have um, edgy corners. And here we go, let's slip the stitch marker really nicely, smoothly. And it doesn't bother me here either. I don't usually use any stitch markers or not store-bought stitch markers. I um, I usually add just like um, I make little loops of yarn with slip knots and I use them because they are really soft and um, very light to use. It is to slip, but these work really nicely as well. I'm surely going to use them a lot in the future. And the hexagonal one was just slipped. So, yeah. They work nicely. These are the 3.5 millimeter needles, so I'm gonna try how these work. Yeah, 3.5 millimeter needles work nicely with these medium size triangular ones. I'll try these are again 4 millimeter needles and works with them as well. So Maybe not 4.5, but 4 millimeter, 3.5 millimeter works really, really well with the medium size triangular one. And lastly, I'll try out the smaller ones. I have here 2.5 millimeter needle. Let's see how these work. So all of these go through the 2.5 millimeter, so these are really good for sock knitting and so on. And actually I didn't have any project on my needles that had such a small needle size, so I had to cast on a pair of socks. Um, any excuse to cast on uh, anything new, uh, I'm gonna take it. So I already used this one for the beginning of the round over here. And I'm gonna add, just to show you, a couple, couple of more, more over here. And on the next round, I will start passing them so you can see how they, how they work in action. And I'll add one more. I'll add a triangular one because we haven't used that one yet. So it has the most sharp edges, so I want to see how it works in um, reality. So I'll just knit the round and then uh, start passing the stitch markers to show you how it, how it looks like and how it, how it feels. So here we are at the end of the round and I'm ready to slip the beginning of round marker. And the last stitch of the round. And here's the hexagonal marker. And I slipped it and just going to continue until I reach the next markers. And again on these smaller needles and um, more lightweight yarn. As for the different or the previous sizes, the large ones and the medium ones. 
this don't feel at all clumsy in my hands. So my um, usual um, concern is if it starts to mess up with the gauge here between the stitches, but I don't feel like it does that. Sometimes if um, if you have really big stitch markers that are uh, really bulky, they can start uh, dragging the fabric around the stitch markers and uh, you end up with looser fabric around the stitch markers than you would have otherwise. So I don't really um, like using stitch markers because of that either. But um, this feel really good to use. And the last one, this is the triangular. It was the only one that feels um, a bit sharp in my hands. So, um, but not too, too sharp either. So I think it goes really nicely. I really, really like using them. And um, I'll definitely use them in my knitting from now on. So here we have the stitch markers. So Hannah Lisa asked for an honest um, product testing and honest opinions about the products. And um, I really like the tools, but I have to say I don't uh, I don't really like the these little pouches that the tools came in. This is really pretty, but uh, I would rather have something with a zipper on. I know that it's it adds to the cost cost of the product, but I feel um, when there's just this one one uh, snap that um, it stays so loose that all my things will fall from from the sides of the like the needle can easily fall from the this little pouch and also um, the snap is so tight that it, when I start to to um, pull it apart it starts to break from um, as this is such a loose uh, felted fabric so the snap is way too uh, hard um, or tight for the fabric so I have to like really put my fingernails um, inside the snap and try to open it so I, I don't see this really lasting in the use as it's almost already broken and uh, also for this one that has the, the uh, stitch markers it's really pretty and uh, and I like how easy it's just to um, turn it around and everything falls on your hand. But um, again, if you're just having it really nicely in your project pack, then probably it works. But I don't think in reality when when your pouch can turn upside down then all these will be falling from this little pouch. And as I mentioned, that the sides of these are open, so I would be afraid of losing them. So I will probably, or I will, not probably, I will put them in some other, other um, storing system as well as for this pouch. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this little review about uh, Hanna-Lisa Hafrakamp's new um, knitting tools. And if you have any questions you want to ask me about them or, or want me to show something um, better or, well, anything you want to know more, just ask me and I will try to explain uh, better to you. And um, if you have want to know more about how the needle uh, the porcelain needle works for seaming and stuff like that just let me know and i'll film a new little episode uh, when i have tried tried it with uh, 
steaming. So um, that's about everything for today and I'll be making a new episode about um, everything I have on my needles very soon so I hope you will tune in for that too. Bye!